up, guys? Welcome back to another video. It's going to be a little late this week. My apologies, but I think it's worth it. In this one, we're going to be going over the life cycle of a stateful widget. Um, what does that mean, you might ask? Well, let's jump back a little bit um, to the difference or one of the big differences between stateless widgets and stateful widgets. And we're not going to be going over the differences in detail in this video. We're also not going to be going over what a stateful widget is and how it works and all that stuff. That'll all be coming in a later video. But just at a very high level, a stateless widget, which um, is not what we're going to be talking about today, but a stateless widget is something that basically just takes data, does what it's told. It just presents it and says, hey, thanks for this. Here, I'm just going to spit it back out. A stateful widget can actually maintain that data and react accordingly to whatever that data uh, is doing, right? So if we have this API request that we're making, we can respond to that and do something based on the status of that API request. Um, or if we're making a call to an on-device database like I'm doing in my app, we have the ability to respond to whatever the, the state of that or the status of that is. And so that's kind of one of the things that makes stateful widgets so cool is that you kind of, not kind of, you can react and respond to what the UI is doing and or what the app is doing rather. Um, and you also have the ability to, to have it kind of think for itself, right? And um, it can make changes on its own. You don't have to be so explicit like you would with a stateful widget or a stateless widget rather. So let's jump into the life cycle of a stateful widget and then we're actually going to go and see it in practice i've set up a little demo we're not going to be doing too much coding or really any coding at all i kind of set everything up beforehand so you could see uh, what was going on without having to sit there and watch me type things and make spelling errors so what happens when we create a new stateful widget well the first thing that happens is that create state is called and this has to ex exist you'll see later this is a method that we override inside of the actual stateful widget. And this is the only thing really that we put inside the stateful widget. And this is called immediately after Flutter is told, hey, here's a new stateful widget. You have to build this. It immediately calls create state and creates, uses the class that we've created called state. It uses that to create the new state object. While this is called once per the widget, like that particular instance of the widget, it might be called multiple times if you have a widget on the same widget on um, uh, the same page, you have multiple of the same widget. Let's say you have um, uh, like a list of people, right? And so you have one widget and you're, you kind of loop through them um, depending on how many people there are. So you would have that method being called multiple times. Uh, another thing is that when this is called, so we basically get a build context associated with that widget. And the build context is really just where is this widget inside of the widget tree? And it kind of gets all the information about that location and what kind of what's going on there. I'm going to have another video going in way more detail about build context because it's still something that I am researching. Also, at this point, mounted equals false. Now, mounted is cool, and we'll see more of this later, because mounted allows you to basically detect if the widget is there or not. The next thing that happens is we get this init state, and this is called once and only once. Um, this basically creates like all the, the stuff initially that you want to have inside of your state, right? Whatever that might be. Not widgets, but data specifically. So one thing that I'm doing, for example, is I believe I am making a call inside of init state to my on-device database to get some information. And that happens exactly when uh, init state runs. That way, by the time we get to my build method, that data is there. And there are some other cases uh, where you'd want to do, where, like things that you'd want to do inside of init state, uh, as well as um, if you need a specific build context um, to do something, that's where you'd be able to get it. The next thing that happens is we get to did change dependencies. And this is called immediately after init state on the first time that the widget is, uh, is built. And I don't believe any other times the widget is built uh, because the build method you'll see happens a lot. So this is basically called on whenever something that this particular widget depends on changes. So if I understand this correctly, that would be if, let's say, um, we maybe make an API request or if something else within our application changes, 
then this is basically called. Also, I think I mentioned this, the build method is called always uh, after this, and we're actually gonna talk about that now. The build method is called often. You can basically think of the build method like React's render method, and it must return a widget, okay? Now you can have a lot of widgets inside of that widget, and you're basically gonna construct your page from there, um, but it has to return a widget. It can't just return null. That will not work. You will get an error. So if you want to check to see if the widget did update, this would be the the, uh, the lifecycle hook to do that. I don't know if they call them lifecycle hooks in, in Flutter, actually. But either way, this would be the place to do it. Um, this is basically called due to anything actually changing inside of the, the parent widget as it gets passed down to this widget. And it also, Flutter is reusing the state here. Something else interesting to note here is that Flutter is actually automatically going to call the build method right after this. So there's no point in calling set state. That would just be redundant and you'd actually end up running the build method twice, which wouldn't be what you want to do and would eventually cause performance issues, uh, not just when you do it once, but if you do it in multiple places, it just wouldn't really be a good thing. Now, this next one is called set state, and this is called quite often, not just by Flutter itself, but also the developer. Essentially, anytime you wanna tell Flutter, hey, rebuild this widget, this is what you do. You throw in set state, and it will essentially say, hey, I've got this new information, Flutter, go rebuild this widget, but switch out this information or whatever the other information is for this information, wherever that kind of matches up. And this is really similar to the actual set state um, method in React. The only difference, well, I don't know about only difference, but one of the big differences is that I believe in React, the set state method is asynchronous. So there is a callback method or function in there that you can actually use to check the new state. In this, that's not the case. It's not asynchronous. So don't expect it to be. Now this next one, deactivate, is kind of interesting. It's not used as often. However, it's called when state is removed from the tree, but can be reinserted before the current frame change is finished. What does that mean? It basically means that whenever this widget is being moved around, this is what will be called. And we're actually gonna see an example of this in our demonstration, where we're going from one page to another and deactivate is called, but when we go back to that page, we're actually basically just going back to, I guess it gets reactivated and we're going back to the same um, state that we were previously and that's why it's deactivated and not disposed. And we'll also see an example of dispose, uh, which is our next one, and they're how we can see kind of how they're different. Now this last one, dispose, is called at the very end of the Stateful Widgets lifecycle when basically we've said, hey Flutter, we will never need this again please get rid of it and free up the system resources that it had been using. And at this point, it's permanent. We can never get this back. It's done, it's over. And mounted, which is the, uh, not method, the property that would have been created and set to true after create state is now equal to false. All right, let's go on over to VS Code and we will check out a little demonstration. It's nothing crazy. Um, but I think it does a pretty good job of demonstrating what's going on. So I'm going to raise this up a little bit so we can kind of see what's going on. And I want to walk through the code of what I've done. I've basically taken the initial Flutter app that you get when you run Flutter Create, and I've essentially modified it slightly uh, so that we can kind of better see what's going on. I've taken everything out of the main, and this is really just a way to kind of manage the app overall. I now have two pages, my home page and my other page. We're currently on my home page, as you can see right above this zero right here. The next thing that I've done is I've, well, I didn't actually make the state, it was already there. But what I've done is inside of every lifecycle hook, what I've done is I put a print statement with the page and then the actual lifecycle, lifecycle method, is that what they're called? Anyway, the actual lifecycle method uh, that it is printing, uh, you know, talking about. Now, beyond that, I've tried my best to go in chronological order of how this will work, with the exception being the build method, which I personally like to put at the very end, 
because that is actually the UI markup. Well, it's not markup, but that's the actual UI code, whereas I like my logic to be above that. So what we have here is at the very top, create state, followed by init state. Below that, well, below that we have did change dependencies. Below that, actually underneath that would be build, so that's where the exception lies. And then here we have did update widget. Uh, this is the increment counter, which actually makes this number right here go up. You can see that. And the reason I've kept that in is because that's where I'm calling set state. And then we have deactivate, which we'll see later. And lastly, we have dispose. And the exact same thing is on the my other page. The only difference is that it says my other page and that's it. So we've got the app fired up. We've reset the state and everything. And let's really quick um, actually get rid of that. And let's really quick observe and just take a little note of what just happened. So the first thing that happened is that the home page created the state which basically said, hey, Flutter, this is a stateful widget. You got to create a new state. After that happened, and we are right here currently, after that happened, we come down here to the actual state class. And we've got mounted equals true right inside of here. I'm printing it inside of a knit state uh, because you can't actually print things from out here apparently. But regardless, mounted is not equal to true. After that, uh, we have home init state, that's right here, followed by did widget update, like we said, that gets called right after init state. And, and then right after that, we jump down here and this build method was called. And that's where it stops because it's it built. It's ready to be displaying things. Nothing else is happening. So let's go ahead and we'll clear this because that'll make it easier to kind of keep track of what's new and what's not. And let's click on this plus button and we'll see what happens. I clicked on it once. That was it. And what happened was it basically ran this increment counter method, which triggered set state. And that makes sense because we have set state right here. The next thing that happens is that the build method reruns. And this also makes sense because like I said, set state really tells Flutter, hey, some data within this widget has changed you need to go and make sure that we represent that on the screen. And so it runs the build method again. Now, let's try something a little different. I'm going to clear this again. And we're going to hit this little button up here, which is supposed to be the camera icon. And if we click that, we basically now go to my other page, which you can see because it says my other page. And now we have, whoops, we have the same thing kind of all over again. Uh, except for some extra stuff at the top or at the bottom rather. So we have other, we can see that here, right? We have other create state, other mounted true, other init state, other did widget update, which is cool. And then build. Okay, perfect. And then we have some other stuff. Well, what happened? Interestingly enough, we deactivated it. And that also makes sense because we moved it off screen and we said, hey, go away, but we might need you for later, so don't remove yourself. And then these two things happen, I believe, because, well, we did update what the widget's doing, kind of. It's, I guess, as a part of that, it's, it's not doing anything, I guess. So that kind of makes sense, too. But what happens, and of course, if we hit this button, we'll get the same, you know, set state, build, stuff like that. What happens, though? when we click on this arrow to go back. What do you think will happen? Comment down below, actually pause the video and comment down below, what do you think will happen when I click this arrow? I'm curious to see um, what your predictions are. Okay, so you've commented down below. Let's take a look and see what happens. We're going to hit this arrow and deactivate runs again. That's kind of interesting and then did update. So these things run again. That's pretty interesting. Honestly, not quite sure why, but they run. That's okay. Um, and we rebuild it because, well, actually the the uh, widget did update. It gets rebuilt, which is good because now we're on that screen again. Then the other page widget is deactivated. And that makes sense too, because, well, we're saying, hey, we might need this for later. But 
We're actually not quite saying that because then it disposes of that widget altogether, which kind of makes sense because there's no way to go back to that, that page. Um, what I think is happening when we click on this is potentially because we're able to, or Flutter allows us the functionality of going back a page, I think it says, oh, wait a minute, they can do that, so I, I can't get rid of it. Whereas when we hit that button, there's no means of going forward in this particular case, and so I think that's why it runs dispose and gets rid of the widget and the widget state. But I guess I could be wrong, of course, so in the event that I am wrong about that, I'll um, either post something in the comments or make another video or something like that. But anyway, in general, that is how the life cycle of a stateful widget works in Flutter. So I would like to thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you liked this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, comment down below. If you didn't, still give me a thumbs up, A plus effort for trying, right? And also comment down below how you think I could get better. Um, other than that, subscribe if you want to see more videos like these because I really enjoy making them actually. And I think I'm going to be making, well, I don't think, I know I'm going to be making a lot more. Um, some things that I'm thinking about making videos on are going back to JavaScript for a little bit. I need to make, well, I'm learning, I want to learn, I should say, about JavaScript unit testing or just automated testing in general. And I get it, but at the same time, I don't get it. And so I want to really sit down for like a weekend or something and just learn it, uh, not learn it from scratch, but just become more confident in it, I guess. And I think it'd be really cool to make a couple of videos on that. So let me know what you guys think about that. Also going along with the uh, automated testing for JavaScript would be automated testing for Flutter, which is another big thing. So again, uh, let me know what you guys think of those video ideas. If you have any other ideas, drop them below in the comments. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for the next video uh, next Wednesday. Peace.